Well, good morning, everybody. Professor Mark Leone here with the Drawing Database, and today we're going to have the uh, long-term pose with the stump, charcoal, chalk, compressed charcoal, and Japanese mono erasers and different type of erasers, and especially we're going to use that stump, that white stick there in the middle, of that cardboard. Now, as you can tell, I'm moving faster, so I'm going to narrate. It's a 13-hour drawing, and we're going to try to narrate this down in about five or six hours. I think we can get what we need. If you need to slow down the video, you can always do that through YouTube as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So what we're looking for here now, we've got our pose of our wonderful model, uh, great kid Steven there, lounging on just a university um, uh, couch there. And uh, we've got him lit to the top left, coming down there. So we're gonna work now with the gesture here, working in the head, working in the oval quality of the head. You're gonna see me slow mountain at my gesture and also work tone and value tone in there too and just get some initial block in. So that's what I'm doing now. We're gonna take great pains to, to be careful, but more careful with our gesture since we're working a longer pose. Doesn't need, it means it's gonna be stiff or awkward or rigid, but we wanna, we're gonna work a little, bit working a little bit longer to keep it alive uh, in, a, in a sense that I, I want to get a little bit more detail with it. So it's kind of a gesture drawing and it's also a little bit of a shorthanded volume drawing with tonality or shadow shapes as well. So today we're working on that Canson Metientis paper, that olive green, which I like quite a bit, that will give us a mid-tone value which will help eliminate the white chalk that we'll use when we light the model, which uh, uh, drawing with values lighter than the paper, which I'll get to later on in this particular drawing. So you see me working the gesture, really pulling the rib cage and the abdomen as it wants to turn towards us, but then he's got the buttock and the legs pushed towards the front face of the, uh, the uh, chair there, the upper part, of the riser part of the, the back of the chair. So we've got this nice contrapposto, this torquing and twisting that's going on that you, you get those lovely folds which make the, I think, the image really come alive. It's sort of very Baroque feeling, uh, late Renaissance Baroque kind of uh, feeling to that. So you notice I'm pulling in a little bit now of the value in the back. You see I've got the eye sockets and just the initial, uh, some tone on the head, and I'll change the head later on um, and, and, and clean it up a little bit later. I'm working the deltoid a little bit, and you can see me go through there. It's a very general first pass as we go through, as, I've, as I'm speeding it up, but you, we want to get you the sense of the full process without maybe really you know, uh, killing, every, boring everybody to death for thir about 13 hours was the, f the full uh, finish for the drawing, which is not too terribly long, but is, is very long for um, certainly more than one pose in a course setting. Um, if you're working a three hour course or even an eight hour course like I was studying, that's a little bit long. So it took me about three or four sessions to, to complete the drawing. And uh, you might want to think about that too as you're working with me or uh, 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 at least together with the pose. Now you can find this pose at the back of the image. Uh, excuse me, at the back of this video, what you'll have this high res photo at the back, and you can screen shoot that and then drag that over, and you can draw, draw from that, and you can have a really good image. And I'll also have the finished drawing where I get to. So you'll have that there. Just keep that in mind because um, the, the image is a little bit small on the screen as I'm drawing. Now, uh, working the chest area, I'm feeling the gesture, but I'm also feeling that initial value structure. So see how I can now more advanced technique where I'm combining both the gesture and also the formation of the abdomen, the rib cage, and the pelvic region together with value and value block. And I'm keeping it very simple, one simple value, darker, a uh, medium kind of dark to signify where those shadow tones and the torquing and twisting of his uh, forms will be. And kind of getting the uh, underwear wrap starting to, to feel that that sort of overturn of the cylinder there as we come up through the lower uh, back, the 
sacrospinalis muscles, rectus spinae muscles to the buttock, and then we get the feeling of that wrap around to uh, the underwear. And so we want to get that gesture coming all the way over. Um, I've got the screen uh, cropped to where I'll just have it in there. And so we feel the split of the buttock, this lower spine coming through. You want to feel, you know, even through clothing, you want to feel the anatomy, the form, the simple forms, and what you know of the human form through those clothings, using your imagination, especially when you get to a more complex arrangement. Now we've got him situated lower. Um, uh, excuse me, his foot is cropped out a little bit, so we won't complete that entire image, but you've got that that calf resting on that armrest, which is awkward. I like that little bulge of the calf that it gets. And you'll see that on his lower bicep, where he's leaning against the um, that vinyl chair, and it bulges out a little bit, too. So just feeling the tubes around the underwear areas and getting a sense for their gesture and a little bit of their initial volume. Working pretty light. I'm working with a medium charcoal pencil here. You can see I've got soft and extra soft down there that I haven't sharpened. Shame on me, I should have those already sharpened. And that big charcoal stick that I'll be using from time to time. Notice I don't use a lot of the charcoal stick initially. I use some of it in, in areas you might think are really small and I can get away with that, but I, I don't suggest you use that charcoal stick for tiny, tiny areas unless you're really familiar because it's such a difficult material. It's so broad, but you can use it in fine tip points and very, very thick points once you really get a hold of that. so Or you can go for it too. Getting the feeling of the leg coming up and through and over to the knee and, and just the stretch of the curvature of that, working that edge a little bit. You can see I use the thick thick part of the lead and the thin part of the lead. Really, really think about how you hold your pencil, your tip. I'm holding it in the palm method and it's the, the most versatile way to draw. And it gives you a certain look, certain academic uh, Baroque or, or Renaissance style. And we, we carry that over to a more contemporary kind of feeling of practice. You know, I, I, students ask me, how come our drawings don't look quite like they did in, in the Renaissance? Well, they have a different sensibility. What they're doing and with, with the overemphasizing turns and torques with muscle form, we don't necessarily uh, do. And there's so many new interpretations for the figure contemporary-wise. So we'll draw the couch here, get, get that laid in the little, little bottom of that I'm laying in and just really constituting the entire drawing as I begin to lay in the figure. And we'll get to uh, the stumping quite soon as I lay in a little bit of the, the value already uh, as well with the chair or the couch chair up there a little bit higher. We can't quite see that, but you can feel that coming in and, and down below. So we want to get that sense of environment that he's into, but we're not going to draw. I'm not going to draw everything. We would be here for a long time for every fold rich fold there is of the clothing and the cloth, but we won't do that. So getting the very difficult foreshortened leg, feeling those cylindrical rounds there, you can see that. So I'm in my second session now of the day. You can see where I've changed a little bit. Camera. <clears throat> and then getting the foot, locating that foot and getting it ready to turn off the cylinders of the calf. Very foreshortened, very rounded. It's coming almost at us, but slightly slightly downward as we as we hover slightly over it so it's it's a below our eye level and then so we get that very strong overlapping there of the uh, the foot about to emerge and we get a little bit of that shading detail and through here as I give myself a moment to prepare for that looks like to prepare for that foot <clears throat> and here we go getting the heel finding out where that heel bisects off of that curve of the lower soleus and the gastrocnemius there to the Achilles tendon. And we'll get that foot coming down, feeling the gesture of the foot, feeling the outside of the foot as if it were in a sock, feeling that heel as it comes down, and then over to the ankle. The medial malleolus there, the medial inside part of the ankle, and through there. So some working on that, getting the bottom of the feet located and not putting on the toes yet, getting kind of a sock feeling to that, locating part of the, the architectural structure. One thing I will say about the, the couch, it's a little bit parallaxed from the photography, so it's leaning a little bit. So we're going to correct that and stand that straight up and down more two point. So anytime you have a tilt to your camera, the more tilt you're going to get, you're going to get more three point. 
um, distortion. So I'm going to take that out. You'll see me do that. Getting the bottom of the foot very flat. Um, the model talked about having dirty feet. If we didn't mind, and I said the dirtier the better. It shows the structure. This shows the footprint. You can see it and where the actual parts of the foot actually touch the ground. And it's important that um, we can see that because when you draw a good bottom of a foot, you want to have a good feeling of the footprint that is involved in that. So a little bit of that flat foreshortened foot or leg. And then the foot really is not so hard to draw. It's a pretty uh, flat, flat foot to draw. So we'll find the tip of the toe, bring those uh, toes around. And you'll find that the big toe is much, much more that uh, medial uh, 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 tarsal there will be uh, very triangular. And then you'll see the get the bottom of the toes there, each one, and how they eventually start to turn and curve, but they point back to the big toe. And the big toe point, points in. We'll see that further. So I get a good approximation of these toes. And then later on, soon, you'll see me go back to the feet and really tighten that up as I tighten up the rest of the drawing to the level of, of um, style, I suppose, that I want, which is fairly academic. Uh, more, a little bit more French Academy than Italian Renaissance, I or Baroque, I suppose, which is really hard to approximate unless you're doing a, a copy or a study because of the you know, grand contrapposto that was uh, fashionable at the time of the Renaissance and into the Baroque. Where you think of Rubens or you think Caravaggio or you think uh, uh, Tiepolo or Tintoretto, Michelangelo. Coming down, uh, feeling the gesture of the, of the arm, coming the forearm down, getting that. And also filling in the shadow space. You see that very simple shadow tone. Feeling in the side plane of the of the apparatus, the couch structure there. Fill that in, turn the p a pencil to the side and fill that in very fast. You can see how fast I work. I'm a flash. No, I'm just filling in. It's actually pretty controlled when it's normal speed there where the separation of that light and dark is, and especially the dark of that um, couch area. Just go ahead and locate that and get him located in. Running the arm through down to the hand and working the hand structure over and gesturing out finding the knuckle and then working those shadow shapes of the hand getting the, the, the blocky formation of the fingers and the, and the thumb there and then working the rest of it into a shadow shape to keep it easier for now so whenever you can do that when you've got part of the figure you can do that I suggest doing that on it may, helps keep that uh, controlled and a faster too with your shadow shape. So we'll get the side plane of the head further now with the indicate the hair a little bit further in the ear. I've got him leaning back further than what the pose suggests and I, I don't I'm not going to correct it. I noticed it earlier I thought you know I don't mind it because he's leaning back. He can put his knee up high or you could bring the knee down lower but I, I, I left it. Rarely do I just leave things the way if, if I like little changes, I'll, I'll, I'll leave them. I'm toning in the side of the plane of the head, getting the hands in there, looking more at the shadow shape of the hand and thinking about its, its flatness here rather than getting the full volume. And we'll force all that in there. Around the model, the couch there. And just get that blocked in too and then figure out a little bit of the perspective here I'm going to keep that straight I'll make that straight up see I'll make those straight now they were tilted and so we'll make those straight that parallax doesn't really work now taking my stump you notice that I got the stump the cardboard stump and I can also sharpen it to the side if it's dirty so you can be sharpen a little bit over there and we can take that now stump and Tighten that point and I can start to slowly with very light pressure, you don't need a lot of heavy pressure, and start to blend now and smooth that those tones out. And I'm going to start on the abdomen here in the lat area of the side and start to just be very careful and slow. It's kind of like painting, which is nice. And then I can go back and catch an edge if I need or darken some somewhere. But right now I'm just taking a general pass. It's not very 
heavy dark. I don't want to get too dark too quick, so we'll keep it light. It's really medium charcoal on that uh, toned paper, so it's not very deep in terms of charcoal uh, material. In terms of value, and you'll see, you'll see me build it up uh, over time. In my first pass at it. That's why it takes a while to build up a long pose. Working the edge underneath the chin, where we have the the light falling in through there. Just looking and squinting and trying to reduce down the shadow patterns to one tone and work on those shapes. I took a little kneaded eraser and erased out what I needed. Taking the stump in, working around the model to the ear, up to the head. You can work the tip or the very wide point of that, a little bit of both. You notice I hold it and still in the palm method. Depends on what. So see, it gets a little dirty. And I like that. Sometimes you can draw with that without having to, to do anything different. You can blend that over. So it's basically smudging and blending. We call that the stump tool. It's like a tree stump, I suppose. Put a little tone back there where the dark is of the chair and the uh, curtain, which isn't actually a bedspread. We'll just say it's a curtain. And then finding the silhouette of the of the dark there. <clears throat> Take that stump and blend it. Stumps are not very expensive, just cardboard rolled cardboard glued together. And working my way across the point. Blending and smoothing out. Very, very rough stage right now. Just working it back and forth. <clears throat> working up the top, the underarm to the pectoral, where the pectoral ends and attaches to the rib cage, and on up and over. To the deltoid there, the little lateral part of it. No, so posterior in front, to here. A little darker, so I can see how you add in some tone there. I can see how it's going to go darker when you add more tone. And you can add soft charcoal or extra soft. So the the darker you start with, the the more it will go dark, and we can blend and can blend and erase and blend, and then draw back on top. So just keeping it simple. Getting both those laid in. I'll work down the arm here. You can see how super fast I am. I had a lot of coffee. Now we're on time, time, uh, sped up time lapse. It's still, we still got an hour or so video. Again, the full drawing took about 13 hours. We're going to try to show that this video, these techniques, in about five four, five, six hours, and it could be plenty in different sections. <clears throat> you need to see the process from start to finish. You need somebody to show you and teach you. Hang in there and watch these. If you're a student of this, of this website, that's probably one of the things that separates the drawing database from others. Is you need to see the entire process. You need to be mentored through it and then practice it. You don't need to see 15 minutes and try to figure it out. That's not really going to help. It might look cool and you might get a lot of subscribers, but it's really not the important thing. And so here I'm taking that gummy and kneaded eraser and just refining what I erased a little bit to clean up little egregious smudges where it's too far over and or it's not clean enough or I want just to, I don't want to leave the drawing too rough. It's already rough enough, but I want to be accurate with these very painted, kind of drawn, painted in shadow shapes. You know, the chamois and the stump are really start to get you in kind of like painting with a drawing. That's what kind of happens there. And so I can go back and use that kneaded eraser and softly clean up edges where I want them. 
that bottom a little bit. And again, that's angled and tilted, but I'm going to straighten that out since it's tilted over. <clears throat> and just blend what I've got. There's not a lot of charcoal there, so it's kind of hard to blend. So we're just going to smooth it best I can. Recapture the edge. See how I reconstitute the edge? You're constantly in a state of getting an edge and kind of wiping it away, then getting an edge, and I'll darken that in. You can see because it just wasn't enough. I don't use a stump that often in my drawing practice, um, even when I was a student. We didn't stump a lot, but I I really enjoy using it. We'll continue to, to experiment with the smudgy process. But it's a controlled smudge, and it's a smudge that relates back to painting. And it can't be utilized just on its own. Everything can't be smudged or it's going to look uh, amateurish. That's why we need you need to look at art history and drawing. And so again, take a look at those videos that I show you that will continue to be part of the drawing database for years to come. There's a lot to show. And some of the best that use Stumps, Degas, Adolf Menzel, and others, French academic artists, use them in, in conjunction with drawing marks on top of or in addition to, not just the stump itself. And, you know, working the softer edges of the abdomen as it torques up to the lower back, to the belly, to get that nice twist that is incurred there. That is it on the model. <clears throat> and you can again say me take the kneaded eraser and go back and refine that which I, I smeared in stump. So it's kind of added a subtractive drawing. Isn't it? So you can see me take the stump and take it almost like a pencil, working the curvature of the model's arms. Go back and re-catching re an edge, just like painting. It's a lot like painting there. Catching that over. <clears throat> Finding the shadow of the form and as it gets overlapped by part of the lower muscles of the, close to the thumb, those extensors, and then over to the knuckles and the hand, and I'll just blend all that into one solid kind of mass of dark for now. Put a little bit of tone on the, the bottom there. Come back over the shorts. Catch that edge over. That will spark. Put down initial tone for those shorts are dark and dark gray. Catch the split of the buttock again, the leg there, the lower back leg, and the buttocks there in the line. Recapture that movement and that gesture as it flows over. Then I'm going to grab the bottom of the foot here so we can start to blend that over. Okay, and through blending that where I see the, the darker shadow shapes working the fore shortened lower leg and then the calf over to the knee underneath the leg there. I just want to blend that smooth. I'm also thinking about turning the form, working the form across contour so it turns. Then I can get the lower part of the shorts and leg. Get that darker where I need it to be. And you can get parts where your, your uh, stump is pretty dark or pretty dirty and that could be great. You don't have to work as hard and you can use that to draw with. It makes a mark on a white clean or sheet of paper or you like to keep it pretty clean so it doesn't smudge too much or get too dark. Notice how I keep you know finding my edge, reconstituting my edge. So you have to constant be, be vigilant, vigilant and constant in finding those, those edges and recapturing them when you draw over them. 
and working hard to keep that smooth, see how it gets it to be a smooth surface, and finding the, the rhythmic and anatomical flow of the buttock. And we'll find and remove some of the material to get the light back on the shorts there. Just taking that off with the kneaded eraser. <clears throat> You kind of know where you're going, it just takes just a matter of time. It's like relax and just get there. <clears throat> Find that darker part of that couch. Could start to stump and blend that underneath the lower back. You can see how they start to softly blend into one another, the couch and the back of the leg a little. We'll separate that later. Then I'll take the stump and just gradually go back over the toes and just the hint of them are there but let's get the shadow shape correct and then the curvature of the the calf and the behind the calf So now I can come back with the kneaded eraser, the Japanese mono. Right now I've got the soft eraser and not worried about getting every single detailed erased edge. I'm just trying to clean up the drawing and get a, a good value separation of light and dark. Recapture the toe a little bit constantly whenever I need that. Just find their flow through there. <clears throat> a little bit more painterly and just reconstitute re that. We'll have time to get back to a real strong detailed part of that later on. <clears throat> Hit that foot bottom there really flat. Then it curves underneath and that middle lip part there is where tendons are striated and stretch from the, the top of the area of the foot to the bottom. You get that calf now folded up on uncomfortably looks on that uh, arm rested. He didn't hold that pose long. He was great. It was a quick shot and we did all kinds of different poses. So now I'm getting darker there. I know we got to go darker in the in the uh, hip area and see how we continue to go through there. And you just you, you get your drawing uh, working with value, add more, you find your edges and you add more and see how you build it up through layers of time. You know, most drawings go that way. Professional drawings, you build it up through layers. Uh, it's rarely a direct value that's right on the, the mark unless it's a faster study. But when it's really slow, you're going to do that in layers and go back and catch an edge, catch an edge, catch an edge there. And that's why you don't want to spend so much time on a very detailed line drawing because you're going to just erode that. So you're really need that gesture in the shadow pattern, don't you? And I'm using a soft charcoal pencil now, or extra soft, so it's pretty dark. But I'm barely, barely pressing down to get those forms. Catch that leg back. And we can see the figures start to emerge, go a little darker with the additive drawing there. Later on, that'll be stumped back and smoothed out. See the difference between the texture? It's a, it's a taste issue. Do you like the smoothness of the stump, or do you like a little bit more direct uh, drawing texture. Look at the art history and drawing videos that I'm starting to get more, I've got about 20 now, 
of different techniques, different artists, and there's so there's hundreds more to add. What where are you? Where do you fall on that range? What do you like in terms of a drawing stylistically? And that will help you decide what kind of drawings you want to make, at least for preparatory or practice techniques. Do you like more stump or less? I got a big piece of charcoal stick there now. I'm getting some nice incised line. A nice big big piece. I can use it just like a pencil, but I like it because it's a little chunkier. Be careful holding it because it can run away with you if you get too much value on there so I can go dark and see I can start to separate that couch a little further now from his reflected light underneath his arm the lat area and then eventually his armpit okay as you can see what that's there <clears throat> Right, we go to the next day session. I did a little bit of extra dark there. Not not a whole lot. So <clears throat> that was a couple of hours, probably maybe an hour or so on that. And so the next day I've got other work to do besides teaching and to making my own work. I was like, okay, let's come back to the let's come back to the video drawing, the lesson, and now we can start over or, or continue on, not start over. And so here we have a good set. And I used a ruler to tighten up some of the line work where I wanted on the table. You see that are on the, the uh, sofa that he's sitting on, just to give me some uh, stronger structure there. I'm going to go back and reconstitute those edges constantly. Right? I've got a soft charcoal pencil and then a stump and working that together. And so the reason we're taking so much time is that a really long pose, it's not a quick sketch, but it can feel quick and rough. And then you're going to see this get really tighter and refined um, as we go through the middle and latter stages. So we're going to feel those tendons coming over from this, uh, the biceps femoris, those little liney shadow shapes, and then the semitendinous and membranous right in through that lower part of the medial part of the leg. Going to move over now to the calf. Just We're going to work those edges a little, aren't we? With the shadows, softer shadow shapes, harder edge shadow shapes. <clears throat> nice and dark in between that. So we can go with the soft charcoal and, and stump that in. Get that to work for us and separate through value. And also bring out more dark in through there. And then let that fade, leg fade a little bit. We'll get a little bit more of the chair there, the structure. And I can see I can bring those darker lines down so it gives it a, a tight structure now come back and grab the calf how many times have we done that right so you're cut, constantly reconstituting the edge then we get the ankle and fill that in a little bit further that dark here we go on top of that area we have a cast shadow on the arm the uh, armrest or the vertical there Catch the underneath, up through the uh, shorts, the elastic band of the underwear. A nice soft charcoal pencil. We'll stump that back and see it just gives you a smoother technique that we'll add to. Smoother look instead of the rougher look if you don't like that. You can again, we'll combine both. So now I'm going back and adding another layer of charcoal drawing on top of the image to go darker, another step darker, keep going a little step darker here, a little step darker there. And bringing that over, get the full value picture, what's the model's doing and then what's around the model for sure. Stepping that over, get some of the lower area, we can't quite see that. It's okay. And 
giving it a smooth feeling. Continue to go over that. When you do that, you just lose your edge. See, I lost the edge of the bottom of his form. Just go back and catch it. No big deal. There it is. Got it back. <clears throat> Cross contouring across the leg and buttock, emphasizing the cylindrical part of that. Splitting out the the uh, top pads of the couch, going a little darker. Stumping now, blending and stumping, another pass, and starting to get closer to the value that we want. Every time you stump, you take a little bit off. It's a little, it's interesting. It's like you're slightly erasing as you're blending, so it won't be as dark as what you had it. It'll be a little bit lighter than that if you've never used a stump before. Take, take practice and take a uh, stump and some clean sheets of uh, practice paper and practice. You can see those little spots down below on the left corner edge. Let me get my self out of the way and you can see those. I did a little studies there just to get a feel for, oh, excuse me, the value that I want there. Hmm, yeah, on there. Um, so I can kind of prepare for that. But you can use a whole sheet of paper and practice with it. We didn't use a ton of stump in art school. It was available, but it wasn't necessarily something that we focused on in, in class for whatever reason why we didn't. That's okay. You know, if you were a French academic artist in the 19th century, you're going to use a lot of stump. Degas, Bougereau, Ongres, and, and uh, artists of, of that time, and those are two centuries worth, but but uh, neoclassical-esque artist Poussin uh, studying the classical, uh, more controlled, balanced drawing and also painting. You were going to stump and blend and, and like Ongres paintings, you were going to be very controlled. Or David's painting, Jacques-Louis David. Those were very, very slick and smooth for the, for the most part. <coughs> You can see me just layer the dark, getting it in there, getting another layer of dark, working it over, cross, crossing it over to get it to blend smooth. This is a good layer. You can start to see it build up a little bit. So that's pretty dark right in through there. The only other way to get darker would be to add additive tone to that. And it's about as dark as I want it to be in its general sense, and I can go darker later. Working on the apparatus up above a little bit. Just getting a feel for where the folds are in the fabric, that leathery, pleathery fabric, that vinyl, probably uh, vinyl, stretched pleather. You can actually paint on that for, for art if you wanted. I know of several artists that use pleather. Getting the corner of the bench chair, stool, couch. I think I've, <laughs> I've named them all. It looks like a double double chair love seat type thing. So now I can pretty confident about where I want that value of his buttock pretty well. I like what's happening there with the light and dark pattern, re reconstituting the edge. And you know, it's just a matter of, of time. You know you're gonna put in the labor. So if you're with me in drawing, and you're watching this, you can draw for a while and slow it down and draw with me. You can slow this video down uh, on YouTube and you probably get it to close to normal speed. You just won't have me, I'll talk really slow, like I'm drunk, that would be terrible. But you you know, you, you can listen to the narration as well and then draw with me too as well. So take the, the images at the back of each video of where we see Steve in there posing and, I'll, and it's at the back larger and you can screen shoot that or just work from that if you want whichever is easier and then watch me we're on you can work with me and see that and you could slow me down and do whatever you need to do that's what's nice about having these videos that we didn't have around when I was a student in LA in the the mid from 93 94 to 97 98 um, doesn't seem that long ago but boy technology Digital technology has really, you know, internet technology has really moved quite a bit 
you know, from we didn't have Wacom tablets, etc. So now, of course, now we do. Just getting that corner as it turns across that slight curve as he's crushing down on it a little bit, putting the weight down on his force and it curves, pushes it down further. Getting that to turn and blend. I'm going to take my ruler to keep a nice straight edge and you can see where those little high, just very slight higher highlights are on that vinyl area just a little bit. The eraser becomes a really great drawing tool to get that cast shadow to move angularly across that wood as at a more of an angle. <clears throat> I clean that up. So we focus on a little what's around the model too. We won't go crazy, but we we'll focus some on that. So I've got the, the kneaded eraser and vacillating between that and the charcoal st stick now. Fatter charcoal, chunky one, stumping that, getting that to blend and go darker. working that in different directions. You can see that. And so we're going to let his leg just fade off to that right right side of the drawing a little bit since it's a little cropped. It was actually on the uh, all the way through but we wanted it we wanted it to crop out a little bit to, to get focus, tighter focus. <clears throat> So I've got the big charcoal stick and you can see me really, I'm going to make a big nice pass through here for value and for tightening edges. I can really manipulate that side, front, corner edges and any different way to catch the, ed the type of edge that I want. In size line or a broad line, see how broad I can make that? Nice and dark and soften that in. It's like a big, nice, big push and pass to even go darker. You want that material to glow. You can see how the light it's a darker material and it glows. It glows on his backside there, and you want that, and so you want that softness. And so it was about time to pull out the big charcoal there, stick, use that very blunt side, and rub that on there, and then I can take the stump and begin to smooth that back, back down further, which is what you'll see here. <clears throat> and just running the contours of that. Look how dirty the stump is now. See how dark this is? Perfect. Exactly what I want. I don't want it to be too clean. The cleaner it is right now will take off more material than good. And I want it to stay on there and get it to blend and be smooth on there. Because I'm about ready to go over that now and pick out the light and really refine that shadow by defining the, the that's kind of an S curve, lit S curve on his buttock there. And see so how I can turn that to side, and, and I can just pick. See, I can pick apart some of that tone on the chamois. Uh, excuse me, on the stump without drawing extra. So that when you get it dirty, you can you can draw with it. You can draw with the tip, the side of it. It's really nice. So now I'm going to take the kneaded eraser and get the bigger, broader shadow pattern. And then later you'll see me move to tiny Japanese erasers, mono erasers, to really get the uh, the, the real supple, subtle turn of the form that you want with uh, the edges. Probably the hardest thing to do in art, one of the hardest things to do is get really soft blended edges. And so I re see how I rework that a little bit, come back over and work it. And it's probably even harder in painting to continue to do that. So there are several different ways that you can go about that. dab at that. I can dab and drag, dab and drag, and I can draw. See, I'm making a little bit of a stroking mark with that to pull it over. I know his buttock pulls in that direction, and that starts to really get what I want through there in terms of lit quality 
and soft quality. And I can just smooth that out just a little bit further with the stump. See how it's getting refined? You can see his butt structure, his, his uh, glute structure and sacral structure start to emerge. So adding that edge of light that it turns to dark is kind of a coarse shadow. And going back again. You're right, it takes a long time to render with the stump. But if you like that look, it's worth it cross-contouring over, finding the split of the buttock, so I continue to add, add and take off, add and Add and change to get the level I want. It's very labor intensive, but it's worth it. Dabbing at the edges, take off a little bit and soften as I go. I'm trying to work now that shadow shape into the light shape, which is kind of an S. Very gradual, two curves down and around. It's kind of the anchor of the, the pose, the buttock kind of middle of the drawing. And so I started to tighten up through there and work to the feet and then come back and work the head down to the back to the buttock for the ending part throughout the video, throughout these different sessions. So we can see now the shorts emerge more competently as we get towards these edges. Now I'm taking the mono eraser. It's the final and I'm getting it a little striated. I'm taking very tiny swaps of the material off the charcoal so I can render further the line. And blending as I go, it's a little blended technique as well as a uh, extraction technique. Getting the bottom. I'm kind of caressing the butt structure now as we go over. Finding the edge of that glowy light on the cusp of the shorts. So I'm working with the Japanese model. It's kind of a medium sized point. It's a, it's a blockier point. It's not a fine tip so I can use the sides and I can use the very blunt fat side too as well. Which works nicely for lots of variations, kind of like working with a big chunky charcoal. And you can see me work now across the across the form. Get that lighter, get some of those folds that we'll get later. You can see the diagonal from the cast shadow of his arm on a little bit of the couch there, that love seat. I 
just taking it easy, following the form, working around, looking at the shadow shape to see where how far it extends. And if I need to soften up the edge of the at the end, I'll take my stump and reconstitute, soften just a little bit. <clears throat> So it was a good good learning experience there to see for you guys to see how long that can take to soften some of the I'm still working on that bringing the buttock over where the split is still through there the underwear where the butt the butt crack is right above the sacrum the coccygeal lower coccy or yeah lower coccygeal and then the, the free part where the glutes split become muscles <clears throat> Coming back and catching the edge, a little bit of folds. It's hard to see in this, in the image you're working from. You have to get a closer up shot or more high res, but there's some folds in there that we'll get. Working through another layer of dark over there to go that final full pass, go a little richer with it. You can see that on the lower glute. <clears throat> Feel that seam to be very careful. Some curving of the buttock in line. It's very subtle. We want the suppleness of his form to come through the, the shorts. We would not want that to be flat in that shadow area. That starts to turn that. I can smooth that a little bit. There we go. Perceptually, just a little small bound. <clears throat> That little elastic band, the darker part, really hits up tight against the edge. We want to feel that the weight of his form and the tightness of those shorts on his oblique there. And you can see that curve on the left side of the top of his waist that curls in. That's a real tight part of his oblique. It will push that in, indent the skin in a little bit. Getting that seam, the back part of the seam. A little bit of shadow back there, generalize it. Even in front will help a little bit. Coming across the fold of the couch cushions. Underneath the buttock, not saying too much right now, letting it, letting it show. And mostly subtractive drawing, just using the weight of the, of the Needed eraser to pull out some of the, the graphite, excuse me, the charcoal material. Next time we do stump, we'll, you, we'll work in graphite. We'll do sort of a French academic type of Degas technique style. Do a little bit here. Just finding the, some of those extra folds, even though I might blend them down a little bit. Gonna find them further. 
You can see where we've, we've got a good, good buttock going on. Cleaning out the bottom edge of that in there around the form through it. Putting a little bit more reflective light where the crease is from the bottom of the glute and it turns to get to the biceps femoris that are the bottom of the hamstring there. Checking edges. Go back and look at the image about 30 minutes or so ago, 20 minutes, however what it was in the video, and look how much clearer it was. So we just keep working and still how rough it is in many different areas until that looks refined. Catching the edge back, one edge, one leg against the other. Needs a separate value or also linear, stronger edges. <clears throat> Working in between the legs there, that little extra small patch there, a little reflected line, a little softer. Notice me picking up the big charcoal to get some darker, darker work in there. Be careful to stick. Respect it. Don't overuse it. Feels pretty relative in order. Still rough, you know, the rough stage, blocking stage, but it feels very good in order where I'm wanting things are flowing nicely within the composition. We're about, you know, in real time with the with the pose, even though it's sped up, it's about two hours in, roughly. This three and a half hour section, I've, I've edited it down to about an hour, a little bit over an hour to give you a sense of how this works. So I think I like this. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but it. It, uh, you can still get good, I think, good narration and see what's going on and follow along by just slowing it down or just stopping and catching up. I've got a medium charcoal pincer. I, I oscillate between the soft, the medium, and the extra soft. I don't use a hard charcoal pencil, but I like the medium to come back when it's a lot harder like here and I don't have to over, over uh, darken and then have to lighten it back up. I can kind of glaze over that and get some of the values that I want in those areas of crease where his calf creases against his his thigh can be a little challenging to kind of handle. And underneath softening that that line. Reflected line. And the more you do this technique, the you know the faster to get. It was slow for me. I haven't done it in many moons. It was a little slower. I'm like, oh, why not? Let's try this. And uh, I like you know I like doing it. it. Just a little. It took me a little while to to re refigure out what I'd done before. But when you draw well, you just get a sense for the new technique, and then you can adapt to it. The main thing is to learn to adaw, draw well, and then start fresh new techniques to add to your tool, tool chest, if you will. So I'm just lightly picking out with the uh, mono eraser some of that reflected line. I'm working kind of on stroking pattern too. Meaning I'm turning the cross turning the form. That's the cylinder, his uh, upper leg. And blending that around, still smoothing that. Going to get darker there. And then around. See, I can pick that edge back out and get that fold to separate. And then start to really get that crease. Turn that around. It's 
soften and turn. So those shadows turning across that cap, those are cast shadows by his top leg. And so we've got form shadows, we've got cast shadows on that leg, which makes it complex but also fun. Just emphasizing that crease, getting a, a few little contour lines. If you go deep in that, you can see they're, they're etched out a little bit more linearly, which is fine. I like a little bit of that. But here I try to keep it under, under, under more stump thin. Taking now the kneaded eraser and getting my soft eraser to get the shadow shape back to where I want, curving across the egg form of the foreshortened leg there, up and around. <clears throat> and then blending that through. And that split, the crease there is going to go darker. So now we can start to push that crevasse, the fold of the leg, and where it moves into the couch, sofa chair, and the shorts is all pretty dark. But you got to look back there and tease that out a little bit to make that work for you. back and softening that light space basically light dark shadow patterns too as well and you can see me look come back look <clears throat> it's a nice little foreshortened complex area to take on gradually wheeling around that egg form of the calf to just splend and smooth as best I can to get that to move. Use the stump too and the erasers to get that smooth, smoothed out. So you want to get the value right, but you also want to get the, the shadow shape correct or the form of it. Just lines, kind of wispy, smoky value on the turn of the calf. You want to get that corrected, which you're getting closer to getting. And there's a little reflected light on back onto the couch from his value. It's shining on his leg because that surface is so shiny. So I'll start to indicate that and get that. Uh, later on, I'll lighten it up a little bit more than what it is to let it glow a little bit further. And I can go back and darken, really settle in what I want there. Really tweak up, catch my edge where I need it, darken where I need it, and just keep working all over. Everybody's a little bit different, but we keep working until we get closer to, to that magic point where we have it. takes a while there's no crying in drawing so don't be crying okay don't 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 wig it on me I'm teasing it makes you want to cry sometimes it takes a while especially with these longer poses see how it's starting to really get clear up so I'm getting my edges and getting my value in harmony and getting the right contrast light value edges and contrasts all together that starts to work for you Starts to give you in that ballpark of where it really starts to become, you know, alive and looks like you want it to look, whether it's from life or from an image or out of your head or a little bit of both can be powerful. So working down the leg that flattens out where that shadow is, it turns and it gets a little flatter 
where that uh, the tibia is there on the medial medial side. Remember the fibula is on the outside, tibia fibula. <clears throat> Oops, run away pencil there, come back. I like to run you sometimes. Thumbs up, ready to go. So find a little bit darker band. They're both are fairly soft edged, but a little bit more harder edge and a very soft form shadow. Like look at the other cast, see how soft that is on the top, and look how harder edged it is on the bottom of it. And then this one is in between because the cast shadow is not directly, it's it's a little bit further away, but still a little bit more harder edged on that turn, that big turn that we have. Find the ankle there. Malleolus is kind of a large kind of triangular hump, very soft though. We'll, we'll find its darker points and then we'll soften it up as we move that core shadow down over to it. Curve that back around. Constantly get that. <clears throat> It's kind of like a painting brush at this point. It's very much a, a tube, really strong egg form, turning a circular, very circular, just turning and turning and turning and turning and turning that form, keeping that, that shape, that form alive there, very important. more reflected line. Later on I'll add a little bit of chalk to it, just extra, just to make it glow just a little bit further. It's kind of a cross contouring stroke that's blended to give it, that's kind of like analogous to painting where you're just working the surface across, turning over the egg form, continuing to turn and turn and turn. Down to the Achilles tendon there, that little part that's lit a little bit by the side light. It's kind of a stranded banded air that goes up to the cellar. It's a very hard, difficult uh, lower leg to draw with the foreshortening, but a lot of fun. Foreshortening can be a lot of fun. Don't shy away from it. You're going to have to, to master it at some point. So get on that as soon as you can. Still a lot of work to do with that foot and leg. A lot of work left. So we'll keep following along here and see how we handle it. Reflected light on the... Uh, right side as it turns to the right. The apex is up where the light is and as it gets dark that's the core shadow and it starts to fall away from the light source and the light terminates or you could call it the terminator. So getting that ankle and a little, little bit of space of those cuboid bones before we get down to the foot proper and the tarsals and metatarsals there. A little reflected light up there on that surface. <clears throat> so we get the back of that heel as it overlaps the... the, the uh, Four short leg there. Soften in the ankle somewhat, on the back side of that, up to the leg, and then on the slope on it. It's like a little little part of the bone there. The tibia. Getting that very meaty calloused and dirty 
from dirt on the floor, charcoal on the on the drawing studio floor there to give that that nice flat, blocky, Kirby blocky impression of the heel. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry when I draw a little bit, but that's what's happening. And you get that crescent moon shape that shows you where the light's coming from. It, it gives you that rounded, blocky, calcaneous region, and we can soften that up a little bit to work through. And finding that lit shape of where it catches the lower part of the heel before it turns, the fattest part before it turns underneath and gets flatter by calluses and time. That's why babies have softer feet. They don't have they don't have those calluses developed yet. Of course, as we get older, no matter our stage of life, we get good calluses. We want those so that we can we can walk. It's a nice little challenging area, the side part of the ankle, medial part of the foot, where there's a little space between the, the uh, malleolus condyle there of the ankle and before we get to the foot. So you can see the highlight as it really starts to turn. We'll get that on the, on the, on the drawing later. And so what I do is I overdraw in, of the shadow and then I erase out where I want those lighter areas and it works out to get the turn. It's like a block, uh, a rectangular block, and it's turned on its side, just like the foot's turned on its side, so we get the bottom. Reconstitute that edge over. Curve that calf around. And we'll fill this in a little darker so we can get more contrast there. As we need, you can see on the, the image, we now can go a little darker as we get that edge cleared up. And it's faster with a thicker charcoal stick. Just be careful along the edges. Don't overdo it. <clears throat> I think we could stump that through now. And that side post Get that filled in nice and dark there, or relatively dark. <clears throat> so now using the Japanese mono eraser, you can see I'm using the, the kind of the razor part of the edge of it. You know, or you can go the opposite way and use the little blunt part, so, so the linear part to cut in a tighter line there and I can see me erase out where that the higher light's going to be. And that's where white chalk will be in there. Now I can start to work and get the heel now more closer to what I want. And we don't get every fold. We don't need it. We're not drawing a photograph, so we don't need every single foldy detail. We're not doing a hyper photo real drawing. We're doing a academic uh, study based on Renaissance and Baroque. And French Academy principles too as well. So we're keeping it in that genre. And that's a great place to learn to draw. And then you can move to contemporary practice or whatever it is that you want to do with with your with your work. Get this bottom. It's a little wide there at the bottom after the heel. And we're gonna you'll see me narrow that up just a little bit later. I believe. So I'm just getting some of those major fold increases. So I can turn in the middle of the foot the opposite way and still maintain his the uh, kind of dirty footprint that we see a little. 
<clears throat> Just catch an edge for the perspective of the bench. Bring down that post. The edge is important. So we see that. Just a quick sketchy edge. <clears throat> then across horizontal. Working the foot now. Working the foot structure. Some of the folding there, not every fold, but where the, the foot has turned on its block, where it's turned downward. We want it to make a nice, good plane change and then reveal the foot structure on the bottom by giving it that footprint that we're starting to get. <clears throat> so you can see the discoloration of the feet and that's what we want to get we want to make that bottom of the foot but those are really where the the feet touch the ground with those fat pads and we want to see that on the bottom of any foot that you draw whether it's clean or not we want to see that on a foot uh, when we draw the bottom of the foot to give the structural components of that of that anatomy those, those what we call bursar type fat pads that work on our feet from the tarsal region and the medial side of the big toe all the way out to the, the more lateral side and down a little bit into the cal calcaneus region. That, that area of our body takes a beating because I think about all the running and jumping you've done in your life and you're going to do and how much you know callus that is. It's quite a bit of it's quite a bit of um, wear and tear, right? Just going to tighten up this area of the feet. Got a couple of more minutes on this this first session here, so we can reconstitute this edge. Bring the cast shadow, a little cast shadow. Catch that on the on the railing there. See it? Oops, there it is, right there. It goes back a little bit. There it is. Just indicate that. Draw with the stump some, smooth and draw as you're working. Draw with that stump and also your tools. Both are additive, you know, additive mark making strategies. The stump is a softer one, a little hard to control. Just getting the feeling of the toes, gonna blend those back, and I can delineate those in the next session more cleanly and clearly. That we'll get those, the, talk about getting the bottom of those toes to really work for us. And getting that side plane now of the of the foot. Because we're just about to ready to go into section two here. Just a few more moments. A little softer erasing there. It's almost like painting through in there. Okay, let's go on to our next session.